They just don't make cars like they used to. They're way better now. I mean, this car was built in 1997. That's 20 years ago. Now, obviously I've done a lot of work to make it perform better and faster and sharper with better handling, but it's much harder to modify an older car than it would be to modify a modern Kia. Because a modern Kia would have 20 years newer technology on it. A lot of people have been complaining about new cars recently, whether it's the design, the automatic transmission, or electric cars. People always seem to have something to complain about. I mean, people are always going to complain about things. I'm guilty of that myself, but I talked with a few friends of mine and we wanted to share our opinion. So that's what this video is going to be about. Car culture is changing, but that's nothing new. I mean, it's been changing since cars were first created. If you look at trucks from the 50s or even muscle cars from the 70s, they're entirely different than the cars that we have today. This is obvious, but what's less obvious is that people continually complain about these changes in the automotive world. I mean, think about it. When fuel injection first became popular, there were still tons of people that complained about it being too electronic and prone to failure because it relied on computers. That's no different than people complaining about losing the manual transmission today. So if people hate when car manufacturers change things on our cars, why do they continue to do it? Why do we have electric cars and dual clutch transmissions and electronic throttle? I mean, they may perform better, but when everyone complains that it's not a standard manual transmission, why do they still make dual clutches? I think Jason can explain this better. Something to think about is that, you know, car makers don't want to make cars that no one wants to buy. And I think one of the more modern complaints is that, you know, the manual transmission is somehow dying off uh, because everything's switching to more efficient, quicker means. And so you look at supercars and none of them have manual transmissions. They're all dual clutch transmissions or other styles of automatic transmissions. Uh, and the manual is kind of being faded out. But, you know, that's not really performance dictating where the market is going, it's the consumer dictating where the market is going. And so if everyone on planet Earth said, you know what, I'm only buying manual transmission, then manufacturers would only build manual transmission vehicles because no one would buy anything else. So the consumer is what dictates what exists out in our marketplace. If you don't buy it, they won't keep making it. And a great example is Porsche. They've said that, you know, as long as people keep buying our manual transmissions, we'll keep throwing it in the 911. And when people stop, then, you know, everything is going to go over to PDK. But ultimately, it's on us, the consumers, that dictates what change occurs because we're making that decision when we pay for a car and I close out all of my clips with be fun stay safe have dirty that's not right people are naturally resistant to change that they don't have control over any kind of change really not just with cars I don't know if it's just fear of the unknown or not wanting to give up a good thing people complained about BMW when they changed their m3 formula from the classic straight six to a v8 and then again to the turbo engine Electric cars have become more prevalent and people complain that there's no sound or that it takes too long to charge. And traction control and electronic steering take away from the driving experience and people say that DCT will never be as engaging as a stick shift. But think about some of the changes that we've had in the past. Disc brakes, power steering, cruise control, fuel injection, and so on. Now, I wasn't around for most of these changes, but I can assure you that there were a lot of people that were resistant to these changes when they came out. Oh, that's always going to be it. We're always going to be those people we never said we were. Like, that's that's how it's going to be. You're always going to be the old get off my lawn guy. Like, that's just how it works. It's like saying, I'll never not be into music if you're really into music. There's going to be a day when you're like, ah, I just don't like stuff anymore. You're going to hate yourself for admitting that, but it's going to happen. The same thing happens with cars. But that being said, there's going to be a time when you're going to see your car and like, oh, that's, that's, that's kind of sweet. There's going to be something that still gets you excited about cars. It's not going to be the same thing because it's not going to have carburetors. It's not going to have manual steering. It, it'll be something completely ridiculous. It may be something we haven't even considered yet. It's not wrong to be resistant to change. In fact, sometimes it's very important that we do resist certain changes. But it's up to us, the consumers, to challenge the manufacturers and engineers to constantly improve. Because sometimes it's our resistance that helps further innovations. That's the whole principle of research and development. Let's use automotive racing as an example. Group B Rally was extremely influential into some positive automotive advancements. There was some crazy stuff happening in those races. If you don't know what Group B Rally is, you owe it to yourself to search some videos on YouTube. But now, with racing regulations, we don't have quite the same opportunities to innovate. In my opinion, Formula One has become increasingly resistant to change. Just about every Formula One car now has to be created the same. There's no room for companies to innovate on their designs and try to improve on others' designs because then there would be an unfair advantage. Just remember when you were a kid and the car at that time, which you got, is what you grew up with and what you were used to. I grew up with a little Celica and I was so used to that style car and the Japanese cars and I fell in love with it. My father hated it. He grew up with muscle cars. 
His father didn't like muscle cars. He grew up in the 30s and 40s and liked those, the wheelies and stuff like that. So it goes generational. I know when my kids come out, God, if electric cars are gonna be big, I'm gonna be the old man griping going, why are you guys driving these electric cars? Gas is the way to go, you know? Times change, things change. Nine times out of 10, things change for the better, especially in the sports car world. Cars keep getting safer and faster and better. So don't hate just because it's something different or something that you're not used to. Be open to change. Bring on the wild innovations. Let's see what we can do. Challenge those innovations. I mean, some of the early dual clutches truly weren't that great, but now that they've been challenged, we've gotten PDK and DCT, which are both lovely transmissions. So bring on the electric cars and bring on the electric assists. I mean, I'm gonna complain if they're not good, but I'm definitely not gonna shut them out just because they're not what I'm used to.